Okay, so this is this is my first talkie video. Uh, I, I've watched so many videos on YouTube of people doing things, and I'm so grateful for all the advice and all the really, really great information I've gotten. Um, and I, I figured it's time to start contributing, um, so I'm going to try this out. Um, it's kind of funny how nervous, like, it makes you when you do your first one. I'm sure everyone else has noticed that who's done these before, but, um, basically I wanted to, I wanted to figure out, uh, show you how to replace the bearing in a PA-108 motor singer. Um, this is the motor that I've had in my 500A for a couple of years, and it's just really loud, um, it's good, it works, but it's it's just awful loud and I, I refurbished a recent one one recently um, and uh, it's a loaner for my mom while I repair hers uh, and it sounded so much better than mine I was a little jealous and I almost didn't want to give it out but <laughs> I did um, but anyway uh, there are a lot of uh, videos on, on how to sort of overhaul this motor. It's a really awesome motor. Uh, pretty awesome motor as my my friend Andy Tube says and and that's where I started all of this was watching his videos learning how to do um, most of this. Um, but I got really ambitious at one point and decided I wanted to replace the bearing in the motor because um, it's sort of the one piece that's um, you know, it, it's the hardest part, I think, of this motor to get apart and replace. And it's it's one of the parts that's kind of crucial to the function of the motor. In that if it's not working well, piloting the shaft, the motor shaft, it's um, it's going to cause wear and, and strain on the motor over time. And it's just not going to work as well as it could. Um, so I've actually already replaced the bearing in this one and put this one together and used it, like I said, for a year or two. Um, and I just wanted to... You know, the enemy of uh, good enough is perfect, but um, I wanted to see if I couldn't get it a little quieter, maybe use a different motor to try to do that. Uh, so I've gotten the part motor apart, as you can see already, mostly, um, and you can see this, and you can learn how to do this on, with Andy Tube's videos, um, removing the, the field core and the insulator and the wedge and the you know, the carbon brushes and screws, etc. And so when you remove the the housing of the motor, you're left with the commutator motor shaft and this aluminum housing and the bearing that sits inside. And so I remove the spring from the top of the shaft. And this is in the 500 series, what does the winding of the bobbin winder. This is not present in the 3 and the 400 series. Um, that's what a dead giveaway that this is a PA-10-8 motor is this little spring on the top of the shaft here. Um, and then I've loosened this screw to be able to remove the worm gear from the shaft like that. And so basically all you're left with is this aluminum housing and the commutator and shaft and the bearing. And you can hear that it's... Uh, there's stuff in there. It's either metal on metal or dirt on metal or whatever. Um, but I kind of think that if you can replace this bearing, um, it's better to do that uh, in, a, in a safe way rather than just sort of lubricate what's there. Um, it's also a little more fussy and probably more than you really need to do to get this working and running for, for many more years. But uh, that's just sort of how I am. And so what I'm going to do is to start, I've cleaned this up a little bit. There's still a lot of gunk in there. And I'm going to have to take this retainer ring, which you can possibly see right there. There's a ring that runs all along the inside of this. It's a pressure fit ring that needs to be popped out of there to be able to release the bearing. Uh, but it's just not so easy. And so what I'm going to start with is a little bit of penetrating oil, uh, some PB blaster, which uh, has is a good friend of mine, but uh, also not such a good friend of mine in that um, it's got great uses for certain things, but when I recently unpackaged a machine that I bought and the entire thing reeked of it, uh, I knew that that was used inappropriately. Um, it's it's good for 
penetrating and loosening things that you want to do loosen, but it's not it's not a lubricant, so I wouldn't use it that way. But I'm going to place a bit of PB blaster oil um, on the inside of this shaft, inside this ring here, the inner the inner race. And um, because what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to push this shaft down through the bearing and out the bottom here. And that's not an easy task. In the past, what I've done is simply supported this and pounded it with a hammer down through the bottom here. And um, there have been times when I've actually ended up distorting the top of this a little bit, which, again, doesn't, obstruct, doesn't hurt the function much, but it makes me feel a little bad. And so what I'm going to try to do this time is um, do the reverse of the way I actually install the bearing, which we'll get to, of course. Um, but what I'm going to try to do is use pipe clamps and things to push the commutator shaft back out of the bearing in a more gentle fashion, and then remove the bearing and then reinstall the new one. Um, and the reinstallation, of course, is the really most gentle part because you don't want to stress the inner and outer races against each other. You don't want to put undue stress on this bearing. And to that end, I've gotten quite a few bearings just in case. Um, these are the 37KDD bearing, which is what um, is pretty standard for all of these motors. Also standard for rollerblade wheels, believe it or not. Um, it's it's uh, been a kind of a standard bearing for a long time, apparently. Um, got these from a place in Cleveland, actually, hometown. Shout out. Um, but what I'll do is sort of place this, got a little blaster here, and I'm going to just sort of use a toothpick to just drop some just inside that inner race, between the inner race and the commutator shaft, the motor shaft itself. And I'm going to let it sit on there for a while to try to loosen that up before I start pressing it out. And in doing that, it's pretty destructive to the bearing that's in there. But I think that's okay because the bearing, I think that the bearing that's in there is relatively useless and is not, they, these weren't meant to be rehabbed, re-lubricated, re-cleaned, um, and, and, you know, they're, they're not able to be taken apart. They're pressed together and they're more or less disposable. Um, and so the thing to do with them is to replace them if you can. And so that's what I'm going to hope to do in this video. Um, so <laughs> bear with me as I make my first, uh, like I said, talkie video and get over my nerves and just sort of talk to you like you're there watching me. Um, and we'll go from there, all right? Be back after this has some time to set. Here we are a little bit close up um, because I wanted to show this. It's it's really an ugly task to get this retainer ring out of here to loosen the bearing. Um, but I've got these pliers, these Zuron uh, really pointy pliers that can get underneath there. And the best way to do it is rent it, rest it on a bench like this. Get right under there start to work it out and there we go it's really not easy and it really requires the right tool I've tried with screwdrivers and lots of other things um, but once you've got it like that <laughs> it shoots across the room if you're not careful and there we go so the retaining ring is loose and is, is out um, but that isn't really even half the battle yet. Um, and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so here we are at the downstairs workbench. And, um, I realized that trying to use this pipe clamp to set it up to press out the commutator shaft from the bearing is not going to work, at least with what I have on hand right now. It's just not fitting in here in a way I need it to. And so that's just not going to work, unfortunately. Um, what I did do is oil this down, the shaft, quite a bit. And you saw me put the penetrating oil in there. Um, and what I think I'm going to do is try to, in a more gentle way, pound the shaft down through the bearing. 
I already tried it out a little bit and it started to move a bit. Um, one of the things you want to do um, before you do that is note where the shaft is in relation to the bearing. In, in other words, how far up into the bearing it is when everything's seated properly so that you can get it back there because there's a little bit of wiggle room and you want to try to get it really where it needs to go. And the best way to note that is to see this notch here in the shaft. And that's notch into which the screw um, that goes through the, the worm gear rests. And so noting, and there's a little lip underneath that, and noting how far out, taking a picture of it or whatever, how far out that goes um, when it's in its normal state and before you start doing anything to it uh, is a good thing to do so you can get it back there. So I'm going to start gently pounding <laughs> this and hoping that we make some motion. Um, I put some good old Singer sewing machine oil on the shaft, like I said, and I think we're going to be able to get it out uh, of the bearing. So I will commence to doing that and not make you watch it blow by blow. Okay, so as I was saying, I was able to make some movement, and with really not very um, forceful blows, really, um, when you use penetrating oil and then oil on the shaft, it does start to send, uh, slip down through that inner race of that bearing. Uh, and you can see that there hasn't been any sort of distortion to the top of this um, bevel around the edge is still there. That may be a little bit, but, you know, you got to break some eggs to make an omelet. Um, and so uh, we're near the end now, and you can see that as I get towards the top of the shaft, um, it gets much narrower, and once we reach that point, it's going to just pop right out the bottom. So I'll let you see that happen. Of course, want to be careful not to drop it. I'm not tapping it very hard at all, and it's, it's really moving and just about there. There we go. And so it's fallen on the bottom part of this shaft, which is, I believe it's one continuous piece of metal all the way up, and everything is built onto it. And so here is the commutator shaft outside of the bearing. Here is that, again, notch that I mentioned, where the screw that goes to the worm gear sits. Uh, to keep that in place. And so, now what we need to do is remove the bearing itself. And that's also um, kind of like getting that retaining ring out of there, an ugly task. Um, we're just going to punch it down through uh, with a screwdriver and knock it out the bottom. Because again, it's uh, disposable at this point. We no longer need it because I have a replacement. bearing has been popped out of the housing and you can see it's really uh when you when you do this you can just feel it and i know that i i know that i put a lot of stress on it doing the things i just did but there's dirt and grime in there that you just can't clean out there's no way to access the bearings there's no way to open this casing um, and so what i have is a brand new one right here and there's just it doesn't spin fast it's not it doesn't need to be frictionless but it needs to be smooth and have no grit nothing inside there because again we're not we're not actually bearing weight like a bearing would it's just piloting that shaft keeping it more or less centered as it spins around on uh, on its axis and so it doesn't it doesn't get a lot of force you know in these in these directions like that the you know the bearing would like when you're in a set of roller skates and you're riding on this. So it doesn't actually get the kind of wear that, say, roller skate wheels would or, or, or skateboard um, bearings would. Um, but it is important to the function of the motor and it needs to be good. And so here is a good one. And so now what we're going to do in the next segment is I'm going to press this into the housing. And then once it's in the housing, 
reverse everything and press the shaft back up through the bearing to the right height. And the thing that you need to do, and remember when you're working with a bearing like this, is that there's the outer race, which is a solid piece of metal, and the inner race, which is a solid piece of metal, and between the two are the bearings. And this bearing is used to having stress in a vertical direction this way, but not along the axis. And so if you start to stress it out and get it like this, it's going to get all wonky. And so we cannot pound the thing through, we cannot, um, we cannot force one race opposite another. And so I'm going to show you the setup that I have that allows us not to put any stress on the bearing, um, on, on any individual race. Um, and so what we need to do, if you, can, if you can think through the actual physical process, is I need to press this outer ring into this housing. I can't press it in with the center ring. And then once that's in there, I need to press the center ring onto the commutator shaft. I can't press the outer ring and push it up through, otherwise we're, we're pushing this way on the inner race and this way on the outer race and it's going to stress the bearing out and make it um, probably damage it. So I need, I have a setup where, whereby I can press on just the outer race and press on just the inner race and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I have done a couple of things to the housing since we got the bearing out. I've stood it in a bath of crud cutter and let it sit there to get rid of all the gunk that was on the inside. And then I took some fine grit sandpaper, first 100, then 400, and just cleaned out the inside of that channel there where the bearing's going to sit. I find that if you don't do that, it's hard to force the bearing back in. And even if there's just a little bit of dirt in there or something, um, this fit is pretty exact, and you want it to be, um, you know, just about as good as it can be. Um, tight, but not so tight that you can't get it in there. Um, and I also oiled just, you know, just a very fine a little bit of oil on the inside there just to make things uh, ease along. And so what you'll need, I'm going to take you out of your tripod here and show you that we need some scotch tape, some washers and spacers of exactly these dimensions, a 9 32nd inner diameter 1 inch spacer with a 5 8 inch outer diameter and 3 8 inch washers. And the reason for those dimensions is that they work with our bearings such that we can not stress it out. So the 3 8 inch washer covers the outer race of the bearing just about right so that when we put it up against the, the bearing and press on the washer we're pressing only on the outer race. And these spacers are amazing because they fit over the end of the commutator shaft just right with almost no play. And then in addition to that the ends are a little bit rounded and so when it's up against the bearing it's really just making contact with the inner race. And so when we push on this, we're only pushing on the inner race. And all that will be obviously of obvious importance as soon as we get started. So what I'm going to do is clean off the bearing a little bit. And I'm going to set it down on top of the housing and see if it's going to just, just starting to go in. I can just hand do it a little bit. So I'm going to push it in as much as I can with my hands. And then maybe a little bit of tapping with some nylon washer or a nylon hammer just on the outer race there and uh, maybe push on it a little bit myself right there and actually that got it all the way flush uh, again the outer race is um, a little above the inner one it seems to be either they're probably about equal so when you're pressing on um, the bearing flat um, you're not stressing one against the other and now what we can do is start to put these washers on because this is not, flush is not where this needs to be. It needs to be seated in there completely. And so we're going to start adding these washers and pressing with our pipe clamp that I have set up on the end of the bench here. I also probably didn't show you that. Pipe clamp I have set up and it pipe clamp itself is clamped to the end of the bench there. So that we can work with it without being afraid it's going to move. So I'm going to take a little roll of tape and place this washer, center it on the bearing. There we go. Just so it stays, it doesn't have to, you know, permanently adhere. And then I'm going to fit it into the pipe clamp and press a little bit more inwards with just the washer on the end there. 
and I see that go in. So now we've got about a washer's depth in there. And then I'm going to put the other two that I've already got taped together on top of that one. Again, centering it best you can. And again, just so they stay and just so you can get it into your pipe clamp. And then press that down a bit more. There we go. And now take the washers off. And the way to check to see if you're at the right depth is one, you heard it go boom, and again, it's pretty much seated. But also, you can see that that channel where the the pressure ring that we dug out earlier um, will go back in and sit there. It's funny, I don't think that necessarily needs to be in there. Um, this bearing is nicely seated in there, and it's not going to just sort of fall out. Um, but the designers have it in there. I'm going to put it back when I reassemble the motor. But this is now, bearing is now seated in the housing. And now comes the, the interesting part where we have to press the commutator shaft back up through the housing and through this bearing. And so, hey, you can get it started there, you see that, but we're going to have to do some, some magic to get it all the way in there. And so what I'm going to start with is... set here, seeing how big I need to adjust my pipe clamp. And what we're going to do first is, now when you're starting this out, it's, it's a little dangerous because again, as you're pushing this through, you don't want to have too much of this lateral motion, because that's stressing the inner race against the outer race and um, stressing the bearing. And so we want to try to do this as, as neatly as possible. It's not going to be perfect. You're not going to be able to, you know, the way this is done in a factory, I'm sure, is with the nice hydraulic press to do this all in one fell swoop, and it's really probably very handy, and they can crank out lots of these, but this is me trying to make up something that's going to work on my own bench. So what I'm going to start with is by putting this in here, getting the shaft in there to just be sticking out the front, and then try to line all this up, and then have my spacer on the front here in the pipe clamp. And we're going to get this all lined up together as much as we can in a straight line and start pressing the, uh, the shaft up through the bearing using one of these spacers. Before I do that, I'm just going to again try to make things as easy as possible. Use a little, little oil Never hurt to just make the process a little smoother because we need all the help we can get to get this on here, at least at first. Okay. All right. So again, I'm going to line this up. Come out of there. Supporting it with my hand. Trying to keep everything straight. Spacer in here. Just get it to the start of the press. And start to push, push the shaft up through the bearing. Oops, sorry about that. And you'll hear that. It sounds terrible, but it's happening. And then when it stops, you're going to notice that I'm at the limit of my spacer. And this is why I have more than one, because now we're going to scotch tape two of them together and continue. Okay, and things are a little easier from here on out because less lining up, that commutator shaft is nice and up in that bearing. Again, I'm not trying to stress it out too much. And we're going to do the same thing over again. Cover your ears if this bothers you. And 
again, we're at the limit of our other spacer. And now we want to start paying attention to where we are. Remember I told you about that notch in the shaft. I don't see it at all yet, which means we got a ways to go. But we have, don't have, we're not going to go forever, and so we want to stop before we get too far in. And to be honest, I don't know if you can go too far in, because if you can, you have to undo everything and sacrifice the bearing, and I don't even want to get there. So what I'm going to do is start doing this a little at a time now and checking. So with three spacers now, pipe clamp back to original position and start pressing again. And we're just going to go for a little bit this time. Back it back out. Check and see, do we see that notch yet? There it is. So there's the notch. I think you can see that just there. And it's coming up just a little bit. And so I'm going to say that we're going to go another half turn maybe have turned creaking sounds that is Let's see where we are so the notch is still the bottom part of the notch is still under the inner race there and I know that we've got to go just a little bit more until I can see the bottom part of the shaft that doesn't have a notch so here we go again a little bit Now I can see the bottom part of the shaft that's not got a notch on it, and I know that, you know what, I'm going to check, because I said I, it's really great to take pictures of these things, so that you know what it looked like before you started. And so here we are. Look how gross that was. Um, so I'm seeing that, you know, it's about a quarter the length of the entire notch is of shaft is sticking out of the top of the race there. So that's kind of what I'm going to go for. Take a look and we'll see where we are. It's just a little bit less than that. I'm going to go for one creek. Yeah, and I'm going to call that, I think, done. And there you are. And I think you remember what it sounded like before. Pretty much silent now and turning beautifully again not frictionless but definitely turning better than the other one was so there we are bearings in shaft is through and uh, now we can go and clean and reassemble um, all the rest of the parts of this motor the way um, there are so many other videos that show you how to do this particularly Andy Tube's videos um, I would definitely follow everything he tells you to do um, and I'm going to sign off for now, but thanks for joining me with this. Um, it's a lot of fun and, uh, kind of glad I can do it. And if anybody out there wants me to do this for them, uh, we can make some arrangements probably. All right. Take care.